Hi everyone, welcome to episode 3. We were implementing our first operation step in episode 2 and in this episode we're going to discuss more about the result object, learn a bit more about keyword arguments and we're going to explore the railway. And as for the following tasks, so what we got to do now is we have to do the validation. We have to make sure that the extracted params have a certain format. And what I do is I literally just copy the validate for create method from the controller. And obviously we have to follow a certain signature. So I have to use context, but I can just uh, use the keyword argument params to grab the params. And now here's the thing, like we actually don't want params. What we want to have is my params. And you might be wondering why is my params suddenly a keyword argument? And that's because whatever you write to the context will be part of the context. And as I already explained, everything that is in the context can be accessed or read as a keyword argument in the following steps. So that's a super convenient way to access a dependency from a former step. So obviously I have to change params here to my params in the method body. And do not forget to add this step to the operation. So adding a method is not enough. You have to configure the operation to run another step. And so once you look at this, it's kind of very intuitively understandable that first extract params is run and then we run validate for create. And now when I run my test, nothing happens. So now is the question, how do we find out if the operation was run successfully or if it failed? And by failed, I mean if the params extraction failed or if the validation failed. So that meaning that we have invalid data passed into the operation. So the general principle in Trailblazer is that you can test what happened on the, in the, on the inside of the operation by using the result object that is returned from an invocation of the operation. Now just add one simple assertion. I just want to see if result.success is true, meaning that the operation was successful. How exciting. And I run my test and oh my goodness, it is not true. It's actually false. So the operation failed. Wow. And now I hope you're asking yourself, how the hell does the operation know whether it has failed or not? And the answer is very simple. So every step is a method and every method in Ruby has a return value. And the return value in the Trailblazer operation decides about whether or not a step has failed. So in the first step, extract params, this assignment is the last value. So this is the return value. So basically, if the key blog post wasn't found, then this will be nil and the step will fail. However, if it found a key, then this is going to evaluate to true. So this step is successful, which means the next step is going to be run. And the next step is a logical it's a logical test. So a logical test always returns true or false anyway. So if this validation passed, then this step was successful. And if it was invalid, obviously it failed. Now the interesting part is that whenever a step, a certain step has failed, the remaining steps are skipped. And once one certain step has failed and basically skipping the remaining steps, the entire operation run is marked as failed. And I'm going to demonstrate how all that fits together in a couple of tests. So let's assume that we're passing in some non-valid params hash. I'm going to run my test and the operation has failed. And I mean, we have no idea what was going on on the inside, but it didn't break and it failed. So it probably did what we were expecting. What if we have a blank title? The operation also fails. What if we have some actual title of our blog post? The operation still fails. And that's because we also have a body validation. So what if we pass a correct title and a body? Let's see. The test actually passes. Wow. So this means that our operation is doing what we are actually expecting. And here's the mental or actually a visual model for you to understand how the flow, the standard railway flow, as we call it in an operation works. So you use step extract params. That means that the first step will be extract params. And then you use step 
a second time and that means that validate for create will be run after extract params. And since that's the last step, we will end in a terminus success. And so whenever a step fails, what actually happens is it will jump to a second track, as we call it, which ends on another terminus called failure. And the same applies for the second step, of course. So if, when validate for create fails, it will jump to the failure track and end in a failure, marking the entire operation as failed. And this is called a railway, and we stole that from, I think, from F Sharp. It's a functional approach, a functional architecture for automatic error handling and for automatic control flow. And before we proceed to the actual cool stuff, we should write some tests. We have to write some tests to cover the failing scenarios. So my first test case is I want to see if the operation fails with a missing params data structure. And I'm just going to copy this over here. And of course, I'm expecting it to be, to be false or to fail. And let's just make this an empty hash. And I run the test. And we have two assertions passing. So now we got to test the validations. And I copy this over again. And I will change the test. So basically make both title and body blank strings. And I run the test and we have three passing assertions. So we basically covered all the edge cases of our two steps with three very simple and fast unit tests. 